Grayson Highlands now. And, uh, okay, how you do this? Oh, this is brilliant. I'm an educator. Man. Oh. Okay. I think this is to keep the wild ponies in. Does that make sense? Are they really wild if they're fenced in? I don't know. We'll soon find out. Uh, looks like we go this way. Rather interesting looking. I suppose spring has sprung. We're still dealing with 40 degree nights, but you know, it's 50 and 60 degree days. The ground is starting to come alive. Can't beat that. 500. Gorgeous up here, huh? Yeah, it is. Great little rock scramble up here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That white blaze there indicates this is actually the path of the trail. And uh, I think it's called Fat Man Squeeze or something. Oh. That's a pretty tight little fit. Good thing Skinny Man here can do this. clean. I expected them to be a little shaggier. Look at that. Little bitty foal. Any Gatorade in that thing? I'm <laughs> thirsty too. I love Virginia. Virginia's for lovers. I don't know if you knew that or not. I was born in Virginia. Norfolk General Hospital. Site of the very first test tube baby ever. My mother says I was a, an early experiment gone bad. Travel in in Marion, Virginia. Uh, hiked 17 miles out of Damascus on Sunday, then did 23 miles on Monday, did 24 miles today. Uh, my two biggest days yet, uh, hiking with another guy named Moon Man from Washington, D.C. Uh, he's 60 years old and quite the, quite the hiker. So between the two of us, we just decided to crush some big miles. Um, Virginia is living up to its name in some respects. There are some flat spots, but uh, um, we still had to get a few rock scrambles. If you go through the Grayson Highlands, you'll understand. Um, right now, 
at the travel in. I'm getting my laundry done. Or as they say in Virginia, guest laundry. So they give you a key. to the laundry room. There's one washer, one dryer, for $1.75 each, plus a dollar for the soap. So you're looking at uh, $4.50. Just about everywhere you go, you're gonna spend $5 for your laundry. I just resupplied at both Ingalls and Walmart. This is basically six days worth of food, breakfast, lunch. Well, let's put it this way. First breakfast, second breakfast, first lunch, second lunch, and dinner, and snacks. So it's got a little bit of everything going on here. Uh, but this is this is uh, probably my biggest food resupply ever. And my only problem is nobody in Marion, Virginia seems to have fuel. And Damascus was pretty much out except for the mountain, uh, Mount Rogers Outfitters, which is the only store in town I didn't go to. So I'm still in search of fuel, but I did a 23, 24 mile day yesterday, 23 mile day today, and uh, 17 the day before. So I did 64 miles in three days. I'm going to try and do another 100 in the next four days. So it's going to be kind of a crazy week, but I, I've got enough fuel here, but I just don't, I, I got enough food. I just don't have any fuel. I got to cook this stuff. Bye. Getting ready to leave my hotel room here in Marion, Virginia. I uh, got up early this morning, we walked to McDonald's, had a quick breakfast, then we went to Ingalls, and then we went to Walmart to resupply all our food and try to buy fuel. Unfortunately, no one has any fuel here in Marion that's our size. We don't want a giant, you know, tank of ISO. We just need, you know, the very small canisters, the four ounces, perfect size for us. Uh, at any rate, we uh, called a shuttle driver to take us back to the trailhead, and they have some for sale at their hostel, which is about 24 miles north of here. So what they're going to do is they're sending us uh, a shuttle driver and going to pick up our packs and us, drop us off at the nearby trailhead, take our packs 24 miles north at the hostel. When we get to the hostel tonight, um, we're going to stay in a bunkhouse there. Uh, it's not that expensive. Uh, it's literally $20 for the shuttle ride and $20 for the hostel. So for 40 bucks plus whatever the fuel cost, which isn't that expensive, you know, maybe five or 10 bucks for a can of fuel, um, we'll be able to walk the 24 miles in a day that normally would be considered a Nero because we're not leaving until, you know, 10 or 11 o'clock. It's about, it'll probably be 11 o'clock before we actually get to the trailhead. And, uh, uh, but we should be able to make the 24 miles by uh, sundown, somewhere around 7, 8 o'clock tonight. Um, so uh, one way or the other, it's turning out to be a pretty good day. We had a 23-mile day, a 24-mile day. We're going to have another 24-mile day. But today we won't be carrying all the extra food we just spent a lot of money on. That's an extra 7 or 8 pounds of food I know I put in my pack. Uh, it's a lot heavier than it was uh, when I got here. and uh, But we'll be able to at least keep the mileage up and um, and then move on for uh, tomorrow you know from there so uh, it's going to be a, it's going to be a good slack pack day if you're curious what i typically might carry in a slack pack what slack pack means they give us a little day pack that we carry on the back it's you know just made of cloth and drawstring uh, so it's no big deal um, but essentially you just need the very essentials that you would typically pull and use during the course of the day in which case i've got a rain jacket just in case we get an un unexpected thunderstorm like I had yesterday. I've got uh, a bandana just to wipe sweat off the face. Some ibuprofen, just never know when you start feeling aches and pains. A little extra toilet paper doesn't hurt to have. I've got my water filter here uh, so that I can add uh, or do filter water. Here's my water bottle. Uh, so I'll have at least one water bottle with me. This is just a trash bag, it's nothing fancy. The uh, spoon is to eat my tuna creations, and so that's that's part of my lunch. Got a cleft bars and a three musketeer as a snack. An extra uh, thing of Propel, which is for my electrolytes, so I like to throw that in my water every time I add that in. 
Got some beef jerky, gives me a little extra something to chew on. This I just bought today, it's the first time I've had it, and it's really good. These are pineapple, dehydrated pineapple and strawberries, and they're really quite good. Very lightweight, and uh, just taste delicious, so I love that. Of course, my wallet and uh, a headlamp in case we get in late, which is possible. Uh, you always want to have that. And then I've got my fanny pack that carries uh, some of these uh, some of these items. The rest of it will go, the food all goes into this little bag. This is the little bag that typically would be the ice bag for your ice maker. I just grabbed it. I'll put all the food in that. And uh, so all of this will go in that tiny little day pack. And this probably weighs less than three pounds. So it's a big difference than carrying the 20, probably 30 pound pack that I've got packed right here right now. So uh, uh, this will make it a lot easier for us to do the 24 miles that we're aiming for. supper time for you and me too what's for dinner hello nothing to see here just passing through oh, damn you scared me more than I scared you I'm at the Bear Garden Hiker Hostel. This is the bunkhouse uh, where most of the hikers stay. Uh, I'm in the cabin over here. That's kind of like the overflow. Myself and Moon Man, who hiked yesterday about 24 miles, stayed in that cabin over there. This right here is the wash house, which is where the uh, uh, showers are. Bear Garden Hiker Hostel. Highly recommend it. Great place to resupply. Knock, knock. Look what I found! The laundry room. I'm still at the Bear Garden Hiker Hostel. Um, near, kind of, it's Cirrus, Virginia, I think is the town. But uh, it's kind of just... Uh, a little bit south of Bland, Virginia, which is the nearest shopping district, about 15, 20 miles from here. Um, and once again, I have visited another medical facility, another walk-in clinic, yes. Uh, my sixth trip to a walk-in clinic on this entire trail. Uh, like I said, I should probably be doing tours of those and, and reviews of those along with my laundry facilities, but um, the reason I had to go in, I stubbed my toe uh, very, very, very badly on the last day, the slack pack day coming into uh, this area. The 24 mile day we did, myself and Moon Man, uh, I was on a downhill and uh, true to my trail name, Reckless Abandon, I typically jog down downhills. Uh, I get the momentum moving and I can't slow myself down so I just kind of run and I hit something I don't know what it was a root or rock or something and I tripped and I did a somersault or two um, I wasn't hurt except I really really did hurt my big toe on my left foot about an hour later I did it again only this time I wasn't running I just slammed my toe into a sawed off tree stump that was right in the middle of the trail and uh, you could hear the F-bombs echoing off the mountain walls for about five minutes. It hurt so bad. Uh, I also, because I was slack packing, did not have my Luco tape, forgot to bring my Luco tape with me. And as a result, I had developed a few hot spots on my feet, which are the beginnings of blisters. And I had no way to address it. I had to just continue hiking until I got here. 
when I got here, my feet were blistered pretty good. My toe was purple. Uh, the next morning, I went to the medical facility. They, they gave me a ride to the medical facility. The shuttle driver did. They x-rayed my toe. It's not broken. It's fine. Uh, it's just badly bruised. It hurts to put any weight on that toe, and at the same time, it hurts to put any weight on that heel because of the blister. So my left foot is practically incapacitated. As a result, I took a zero day yesterday. I didn't hike at all. I just stayed at the hostel all day and uh, kind of nursed my wounds. And then I got up this morning. I still was in no condition to move. So once again, I took another zero day. I'm the only one here right now. Even the owner is out on the property somewhere. So basically, I am the host if any hikers come by, and one or two already have. But uh, uh, it, it ultimately it teaches you a lesson. You really do have to listen to your body. You have to prepare for the worst. You have to not rush it. I did three days in a row over 20 miles a day. And on the third day, I, I made the mistake of not having the Luco tape and uh, not being able to address my wounds and my blisters. And I overdid it by trying to rush myself through that day. Um, I've, I've got to slow down. I'm a stubborn son of a bitch. Uh, I'm a Taurus. Maybe that's why. I don't know. But the reality is, uh, you know, in trying to crush these big mild days, I set myself back a couple of days, so I've got to learn to pace myself better. And that's my only uh, warning and advice I can give to, to any hikers that are out there thinking of, of doing this. Um, you can't overdo it. You really do have to draw yourself back in. Don't get sucked into this, gotta run 25 miles a day for days on end. It's just gonna hurt you, and then you'll have to take days off like I'm doing and it sets you back all over again. I'd much rather be doing, you know, five uh, 15 mile days than three 25 mile days because three 25 mile days will hurt you at my age. Remember, I'm pretty old. Um, at any rate, uh, I hope to be able to leave here tomorrow, but it may be another day, we'll see. Uh, for now, I'm, uh, I'm just gonna hang out here at the Bear Garden Hiker Hostel and uh, just enjoy the the beautiful weather that I'm not able to hike in and um, with any luck at all uh, get back out on the trail real soon.